Do you desire to know God? Yes. Of course she's going to say yes. Listen to her voice break. Yes, she already knows that. She's here at this conference, at this forum or whatever. She desires God, but she doesn't know that she's saved. Hey, welcome back to Bible Line. I'm your host, Pastor Jesse Martinez. Today we're in another Pastor Reacts video. Today we're looking at good old J Mac. That's what people in the comment section call him that are all pro John uh, MacArthur. But we're going to look at a video that I have posted on our channel before. Uh, but it's one of those videos that I saw it months ago and it really just struck me. It, it honestly moved me the first time I watched it because you see somebody who is very evidently unsure that they're saved. They ask a very simple set of questions that deserve simple answers. And John MacArthur's response is pointing her back to herself. You need to watch out for this kind of stuff. I've said when we did the Mike Winger reacts video a couple of weeks ago, I said, and I still hold this, my desire is not to be inflammatory or disruptive, but I will not sit down when there's an opportunity to stand for the truth. And that's what we're going to do. And I know that a lot of people are caught up in this Calvinistic teaching. How do I know that I'm chosen? How do I know that I'm a part of the elect? And they're always told to look back on their works. And we're going to see in First John chapter 5, starting around verse number 10 through verse 13, how we can know that we have eternal life. And then I want you to see what is said of these men here, because they're saying something different. And you, the viewer, you need to be aware of this because it's not, it's not a game. And so many of you know this. It's not a game. You have a hard time sleeping at night. You have a hard time having any peace and joy. You continue to look at yourself for your eternal life. That is not God's plan for his children. He wants us to have assurance of eternal life. But this Calvinist teaching, it robs people. And you're going to see these, this, this young woman just get totally robbed. And I, don't, I have no idea how it ends. I know there's a seven-minute and ten-second version of this, but I think that this short clip really captures it all together. But before we look at the clip, I just want to read you these verses, let them stand for themselves, and then we'll play the clip. First John chapter 5 and verse 10. He that believeth on the Son hath the witness in himself. He that believeth not God hath made him a liar, because he believeth not the record that God gave of his Son. And this is the record, that God hath given to us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. He that hath the Son hath life, and he that hath not the Son of God hath not life. These things have I written unto you, that believe on the name of the Son of God, that ye may know that ye have eternal life, and that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God. So that's God. The record that he has said, if you have life, you've believed on his Son. If you do not have life, you have not believed on his Son, and you are calling him a liar. Simple. So here's this young lady. She asks a series of questions to John MacArthur. Note the difference in the response. Should I be taking communion if I am not sure if I am saved? If I am not chosen, would I even care about being saved? Really good questions, Joy. I can, I can hear the cry of your heart, Joy. I, I, I want to make it as simple as I can. He wants to make it as simple as he can. She asks some very simple questions. Number one, should I be taking communion if I don't know that I'm chosen? Now, I'm, I'm inferring this here. She probably means, am I chosen as one of God's elect to be saved? And we've covered Calvinism at length on this channel. So go back and look. I'm pretty sure we have a playlist where you can see all of our Calvinism content. But the elect is Christ, and you're found in him by placing your faith in him. So if you want to know that you're chosen, ask yourself if you've believed on Jesus Christ for eternal life. If you have, you're chosen. Now, you should not be taking communion if you're not saved. There's punishment that comes from that, and 1 Corinthians 11 details all of that. But she's struggling with assurance here. She knows the promises, it seems, to those who take communion unworthily, 
She doesn't want to experience those consequences. So she wants to know if she's saved. MacArthur recognizes she can, he can hear the struggle. He wants to be simple. So let's see what he says is simple. Um, the fact that you are asking these questions is evidence of the work of God in your heart. Okay. So I want you to see what he says there. The fact that you are asking these questions is evidence that God is working in your heart. Who does that point back to? Does it point back to Jesus Christ and the Word of God? Or does it point back to the individual? It points back to the individual. And we know she's already struggling with that. Because she says, how do I know that I'm chosen? So if she's looking at herself, she's walking into this question unaware of, of how she knows she's going to heaven, of, of how she's chosen. So MacArthur says, I want to be as simple as I can. Look back to yourself. Oh, the very fact that you're asking these questions is proof that you're really saved. Now, he doesn't say really saved, but that's what he's concluding. Let's continue. So that's the first condition. Well, you're asking these questions. You know, a heathen wouldn't ask these questions. <laughs> what must I do to be saved? I mean, the Philippian jailer was not saved then, but he was asking a question. He wanted to get saved. Um, the way you know that you are saved is by your desire. And this is the record that God hath given to us, eternal life. And this life is in his Son. And he that hath the Son hath life. And he that hath not the Son of God hath not life. These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that ye may know that ye have eternal life. MacArthur says the way that you know that you are saved is by your desire. Let's continue. Do you desire to know God? So this is now the third thing that he has told her. Number one, the fact that you're asking these questions is proof. Number two, the, you, you know that you're saved by your desire. And now he's going to go into a, a, a barrage of conditions. The first one, do you desire to know God, which is really the third one. Yes. Of course she's going to say yes. Listen to her voice break. Yes, she already knows that. She's here at this conference, at this forum or whatever. She desires God, but she doesn't know that she's saved. She sees the problem. So it's, it's, I don't understand why he's asking that question. So she says yes. Three conditions now. Do you desire, do you desire that he would know you and love you? Five now. Do you desire God? Do you desire that he would know you? Desire that he would love you? Listen to her again. Yes. Yep. Do you desire to love him? Six. Yes. Do you desire to honor him? Seven. Yes. Do you desire to obey his word? Eight. I do, but I, it, I can't do it on my own strength. Well, of course not. Join the club. That to me is like, you're going to, I, I cut it because I don't want it to go to whatever the next video is. But that to me... Uh, excuse me, uh, after the cut, there's a bunch of people that laugh. It's like, oh, yeah, oh, we all, don't we all desire it? You know, don't we uh, all have this desire to know God and obey his word and all this stuff to prove that we're saved? And he says, well, of course not. Join the club. And she could, because she knows within herself, there is this battle going on. She desires to know God, to obey his word, to be known by him, but she can't do it on her own strength. The Bible talks about this in Galatians chapter 5, starting in verse 17. For the flesh lusteth against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh, and these are contrary the one to the other, so that you cannot do the things that you would. So this, this is talking about the truth of the two natures, in which joy, the sad reality is, if she hasn't put her trust in Christ, she only has that flesh. She doesn't have the spirit. She doesn't have the Holy Spirit. She doesn't have the new birth. No matter how much she desires to be known of God, the only way that she can be known and recognized as his child is by faith in Jesus Christ and in him alone. And MacArthur totally, he takes eight swings at this and he misses the ball. It's just a total strikeout. And it's sad because what happens is everybody laughs it off at the end of the clip, but this poor girl she probably walks out of that conference with a little bit of assurance, but the next day, as soon as her flesh rears back up and she is who she is, who's, she's a 
a sinner with no ability to save herself, looking to herself to be saved, she has no assurance. That's why I just say the simplicity of John chapter, 1 John chapter 5. If you have believed, these things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God. So that's the condition. You believe that ye may know that ye have eternal life. Okay, so if I was MacArthur in that moment, I would point her to 1 John 5, 13. And there's many other passages, but I would point that young girl to 1 John 5, 13 because it's so very simple and clear. Joy, have you believed that the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ is sufficient to pay for your sins? Well, she says yes, then I with 100% confidence and assurance that God says to her, then the God says, you have eternal life. And it's, it's put to bed. Then you can show her places like John chapter 10 in verse 28, which says, And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. You can go to other places like John chapter 5 in verse 24, where it says, and believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. These are straight promises and guarantees. You believe, you receive, it's done. Salvation is finished. But when we have people like this with their big budgets and big ministries and big influence, they are leading people to look to themselves and it keeps them from either this young girl is either being kept from trusting in Jesus Christ alone or she's already been saved and she cannot have victory in her Christian life. There's no way this young lady is going to have any confidence to share the gospel with anybody else if she is saved. Let's just assume that she trusted Christ years ago and got caught up in killer Calvinism. Is she going to have any confidence to share the gospel with anybody else? No. No. Not at all. And it's a shame. And I'm, gonna, I'm not going to sit down with stuff like this. I'm so glad I didn't get caught into this. There's so much appeal, especially for young men with this kind of teaching. Oh, the intellectualism of Calvinism. It's like, oh, we're all puffing our cigars like Charles Spurgeon out here and just, well, we're such deep thinkers of God. The wisdom of man is going to be put to shame by the foolishness of God. Which is how God, uh, which is how man looks at the wisdom of God. The Jews look for a sign; the Greeks look for knowledge. Be careful! Be careful! Be careful! Be careful! Let the word speak clearly and plainly. And if and if you're joy, you know, if you're joy and you're watching this, I want you to know for sure that you have eternal life. You put your faith, you trust in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ alone. You receive the free gift of everlasting life. Your salvation's finished. And you're going to struggle with your flesh, as do I, as do, does every Christian. Read Romans 7 about all that. But you don't have to worry and wrestle with, am I saved? You put your faith in Jesus Christ. The Bible says you believe you're a child of God. That'll be it for today. Share this video. Share it far and wide. Leave a comment. If you're the person that's like, that's me. I was joy. I was like that. And this is how I came to the truth. Leave it in the comment section. And to all the Calvies out there, I know you're watching. Yeah, I know. I'm coining that term. Trent's laughing behind the camera. Calvies, man. All you Calvinist proponents out there, leave a comment too. But I want to ask you, do you know you're saved because of the word of God or because of your works? Let's have a real conversation down there. But make sure you keep it right here on Bible Line. Keep looking up because Jesus Christ is coming soon. We'll see you next time. God bless. If you enjoyed today's episode of Bible Line, make sure to subscribe to the channel and share this video with a friend. Do you have a Bible question? Send us an email, questions at BibleLineMinistries.org, and we'll do our best to get you an answer. Or you can leave your question in the comments of this video. Be sure to check the links in the description for more clear Bible teaching. Bible Line is a ministry of Calvary Community Church located in Tampa, Florida.